I had developed um, some antibody, an antibody that was a so-called humanized antibody, and uh, this was put into a patient in Cambridge, and it had a dramatic result. Um, a large mass of tumor was blown away in this patient. And I went in and talked to her, and she was a lovely person. She didn't know whether it was going to work, so I said it's just as well, because I haven't a clue whether it's going to work or not. Um, it is very experimental, you know, but it's looking quite promising. He said, well, dear, it only has to buy me um, a couple of months. I said, well, why is that? And she said, well, because my husband is dying, and I want to be with him when he dies. I, I was quite choked, you know, by this comment. And I thought, this is... It, it had the effect of making me think. This woman could do nothing about her disease. And here I was as a scientist, and I could do something to make a difference to these people. People are very grateful for the things we've done. So you see the success stories, which is, it's always very encouraging, because these are very hard, it's very hard work. Um, and then when you see these people benefiting, you know, I'm, I feel very happy. I've seen different times um, because I've been involved in um, exploiting my inventions over the last um, 20, 25 years. I think it's easier in the sense that, you, that you've got a variety of models that you could look at, but I also think it's also more difficult because uh, there's more people shouting around, there's more competition. You're expected to be much more professional. I suppose at the very beginning was 1990 with setting up Cambridge Antibody Technology. And that was a different scene. There was uh, much less money available. Um, very few people um, would be around to allocate money. So for example, in the UK, um, of the VC organizations, there was probably only one, which was Biotechnology Investments Limited. At the same time, uh, there was a lot less experience of other scientists doing this kind of thing. So it wasn't as if we had any mentors, we knew what we were supposed to do. There was no one we could look up to and say, oh yes, I want to do it like him or her. Well, if you're expecting someone to invest in you, then um, I suppose what assets do they have? They have you as an individual, and so you've got whatever the contract is that binds you into the company or enterprise. And they've got an idea, an idea for making a product or a technology which has to be, which is written down. And on which they need to spend, or they may have spent, a considerable amount of money in developing that to make it useful. So it's very important that if people are going to invest in that, that they need to make sure it's protected. And therefore, it is important to articulate your ideas very clearly and then to put them in a legally uh, um, compelling form, as you would do in a patent. So, for example, a venture capitalist usually has a very limited time, maybe seven or maybe ten years, in which they have got, have got to make their investment and to get their money out with a profit. So they're looking for crystallizing an exit all the time. They're looking at the fastest way of crystallizing uh, their exit and getting out. They don't really want to have a very long-term investment. So if you're talking to them, what they've got to feel is that, first of all, your idea can be matured and can be taken all the way through to some crystallizable event, whether that's a product or not. And that secondly, that you are the kind of person that is going to be capable of doing, doing that. Um, so they've got to feel that you're business-like, that you will be able, for example, in the end, um, in combination with other people, to present as part of a team when you, if you want to sell the company.